Monitoring isn't anything new for experienced teachers. We do it all the time to check students are on task, to gauge task achievement, to offer help and encouragement where needed and to build rapport. Assessment for Learning, or AFL, takes this one step further. Rather than simply observing, teachers actively gather and record information during lessons and later share this information to give personalised feedback to students. This feedback should be balanced, accentuating positive aspects as well as what the students can do to improve. In this video, I'm going to share some techniques and strategies for monitoring learners and conducting feedback. I'm sure the ideas will work in your classroom. Observing a whole class of students and trying to draw conclusions is a hard task for anyone, so certain tools and strategies are necessary for this to be successful. Assessment for learning calls for focused observation, which you can do using an observation form or checklist. One way to do this is to choose one or two criteria for each lesson and observe all students according to those. The criteria are up to you and will depend on your lesson aims, but some examples might be the student can ask and answer questions with a partner, the student can check their written work for spelling, punctuation and grammar mistakes, or the student cooperates with classmates during lessons. Alternatively, you could have a longer list of criteria and choose one or two students to observe each lesson, ticking off the things they achieve. With this method, you could observe each student a couple of times each over the semester. This information will help you build up a detailed record of each child's progress and participation in lessons. It allows the teacher to identify strengths and weaknesses early in the course and to tailor materials and lesson content to the needs of their students. That way, you can teach the students things which are relevant, meaningful and appropriate for them. It's important that you use this information not only to inform teaching, but that you share this with your students by giving them focused and personalised feedback. Teachers are great at praising, but too much general praise, such as well done everyone, you finished the task, will not help students to get better or identify their specific successes. Focused and constructive feedback would include things such as well done, I saw you found the speaking task difficult, but you used very good vocabulary in your answers, or I liked your text, but it would have been better if you had checked it for spelling mistakes. This sort of feedback is actionable and manageable. It gives students something concrete to work on. This feedback can be shared with individual students during lessons and is a great habit to get into. There's nothing wrong with students volunteering to give answers, but if we always use this method and it's always the most confident students who answer, then we run the risk that some students will stop trying. There are a range of AFL techniques which encourage all students to participate in both verbal and non-verbal ways. They also allow teachers to see how all the students are doing, not only the ones who are answering the questions. These are some of the ideas I selected. Give each student a lollipop stick and ask them to write their name on it. Collect all the sticks and put them in a cup. When collecting ideas from the class or checking answers, rather than asking for volunteers, the teacher takes a stick from the cup. It's this student who should respond. Because students don't know who will be nominated, it's in their interest to do the task carefully and to work with their partner to check their ideas. That way they will feel confident if their name is selected. This strategy can be used regularly to become one of your classroom routines. It can be very intimidating to put your hand up and say you don't understand something. Students can also feel embarrassed when the teacher calls on them and they don't know the answer. Students are much more likely to indicate they have a problem or they need more help if they can do it without drawing attention to themselves. They can do this by holding up a card to indicate their feelings. In addition, cards can be used when checking answers. If everyone shows their response to a task or question by holding up a card, then the teacher can quickly see how everyone responded, not only the student who was nominated to give the answer. If everyone got the answer correct, it's time to move on. But if there is a mix of correct and incorrect answers, then that's the perfect time for some extra clarification and support from the teacher. It's easy to create your own response cards. These cards can be used for checking answers to multiple choice tasks. Students can make their own response cards or for a zero preparation option then thumbs up and thumbs down will also do the trick. Make sure students look after these cards so they can be used over and over again to help you monitor progress, involve all students and give them a voice when it comes to their learning. Things like report writing can be overwhelming when you have a big class. We tend to know a lot about the strongest and most disruptive students, but others can pass under our radars. By using assessment for learning, it's easier to spread your attention evenly and notice what's really going on in the classroom. 
Active monitoring, record keeping and constructive feedback techniques will not add much to your planning or change what you already do in the classroom. But these techniques will give you plenty of extremely useful information which can be used to plan and adjust teaching, communicate with caregivers and motivate learners to work on their own specific development areas. And remember, assessment for learning isn't something you do once and then forget. Build it into your regular classroom routine. Using the techniques described in this video to conduct feedback means all students are involved, they all get to share their ideas and opinions and they know their teacher cares about them, which leads to a happy and healthy classroom. Make sure you join me in the next video where I'll be talking about peer learning.